Hello everyone, Crydex here. Today we are going to be doing a basic Helmod tutorial as a little bit of a celebration for 100 subscribers. Thank you guys so much for supporting the channel. Uh, it's just a fun hobby for me, so I'm glad that you guys have enjoyed it thus far. So, let's dive in. So I'm just going to walk you through the basics of what you need to set up a production line and not through a lot of the advanced features or even the intermediate features because I want this to stay a short video. So. What is Helmod? Well, as you can see, it is a large window and you use it to plan out your factory. So I would suggest tying it to a nice hotkey that you can access easily. And then I would go into preferences and change factory number format and element number format to two decimal places because otherwise it's rounding things and I like to know exactly how many factories I need, not just a whole number. I want to, I'd rather know that I need 1.57 factories than it just tells me I need two. But that's, I guess, up to your preference. So skipping most of these buttons in the top right that you won't need, I'm going to start with the Add a Recipe button. And currently I have Pandadon's mods loaded in, so we are going to look at a lot of extra tabs compared to Vanilla Factorio. But let me walk you through this recipe selector. You can filter by product or ingredient. Ingredient would mean you're searching for recipes that use a certain item. So we're going to do small parts as an example. And this would tell me all the recipes that use small parts as an ingredient. But I want the actual recipe for small parts, so I want filter by product. Then you can do English or translated names. I think I always have it on translated names. And then container equal will kind of define how it searches for this word. And then show disable will show you the recipes that you haven't researched yet. And then show hidden will show you recipes that generally um, buildings can't craft or they're special things like I have deadlock stacking and for some reason the iron gear wheel unstacking is showing up as a recipe for this. I'm not sure why, but show hidden and disable I usually have on because sometimes you'll find recipes that you can't find otherwise. So we go ahead and click this and it pops in two things. First, it created a production line for small parts for this whole thing. So this icon up here matches this icon right here. The production line is completely separate from all other production lines. But within this production line, we can have multiple blocks and you can see it's indented a little bit here. So in the production line view, if we hit add a recipe, it will add a whole new block. Whereas in the block view, if we add a recipe, it will just add another row here. And I know some mods like Factory Planner, you can nest as many tiers as you want, but in Hillmod, there's only two tiers. There's production lines and production blocks. And the blocks can be linked together all to feed into one block at the top, or you can keep them unlinked and have separate outputs within a single line. But we're not gonna go super deep on those things today. We're just gonna show you how to set up one nice production block and explain what each of these buttons at the top does. So first, you wanna set your output. Maybe I want five small parts per second. So I type in five and hit enter. These buttons would just set it equal to one belt's worth, but that's more than I need. So I set it to five and it will tell me I need one building crafting to make five per second. And I need inputs of 2.5 copper, 2.5 iron sticks, 2.5 gears, five bolts. And now you can click on each of these ingredients and it will automatically search that up and you can select what recipe you'd like to use from all your options to make iron sticks, to make iron gears, and to make bolts. But you'll notice bolts need sticks, but I already have a stick maker, so I should move it down to reorganize it so that it will make sticks at the bottom, which will provide sticks to both the bolts and the small parts. So that way you can organize things so you don't need the same crafting building in multiple places, unless you want the same crafting building in multiple places, which sometimes in Factorio you might do. Now this button here decides whether it'll show you every product that you're making, even the ones that get used later in the line, or just the ones that end up being extra. So usually you'll want to have this off, but if you want to see, you know, maybe you want to add in some extra output gears, you could type in numbers there and it would change the gear makers accordingly. But generally, you're just trying to make one thing with the block. So let's walk through each of these buttons at the top. Add a recipe, we already talked about. We could add another recipe to this block and modify it however we want. Usually you only need one recipe per block, but in more advanced videos, we'll cover 
how to manage multiple. Add technology, you can completely ignore. I've never used it in my life. You can basically plug in an actual technology from the research tree and say you want like four of those per second and it will tell you what you need for that. Um, but I mean, I think as factorial players, we all just make a bunch of labs and a bunch of science. So if you really wanna go deep, you can try that out. Select energy, I also don't use. It just is a way to calculate how much uh, or how many steam engines or solar panels you would need for this particular block of power. I don't generally use that. Remove production block is going to delete this whole thing. We don't wanna do that. Summary is pretty handy. It will summarize all the different buildings you need, like chemical plants and oil refineries and things like that. It'll also summarize beacons and modules, which we won't cover in this video. Now we get into the more useful buttons. So linking is this button right here, and it says first block can't link. So let's add another block, which you can either do by changing one of these recipes into its own block with this little house looking button, or you can go back to the production line and add a recipe. So let's say we want a production block for iron plates. So we will select our iron plate recipe and you can see it added a new block here. And it actually has the link selected by default. The little chain is linked up. So what that means is the output of this iron plate block is tied to the input of the blocks above it. So it will automatically change how many iron plates it's telling you to make based on how many iron plates the rest of the production line needs. So if I change my small parts to 10, it default changes the iron plates. So that's a handy way to set to organize um, your different kind of factory areas by linking and unlinking blocks. But let's say I wanted to make copper plates in this production line, copper plate, but I didn't want it to be linked up. I just wanted this to be its own thing and I wanted to type 20 in here. It won't even let me click on it. Then you unlink it and then I can type 20 copper plates per second. It'll tell me what I need for that. And the overall production line output, it will tell me I have an extra 15 copper plates because I'm making 20 in this block, I'm using five in this. So if you want the numbers to not match, then you will unlink the blocks. And especially with complicated mod packs, sometimes you need to unlink the blocks because they'll try to match ingredients and products that you didn't intend to match because sometimes there's multiple ingredients and products. So that's what linking does. Pin. Pin is one of the more handy buttons in this in all of Hellmod. It's actually why I use Hellmod over Factory Planner. Though I haven't used Factory Planner in a while, they may have this feature, but for a while they didn't and I love this feature. You can pin something and then you can run around and build this factory. And these buttons here, you can show the beacon column. I usually have the beacon column hidden for most of the game, at least until I need modules. You can hide or show as much as you want. Generally, I like to see this information, but it's up to you. You can also hit the summary button here, which again will tell you how many buildings you need to build. And then you can click on this button, which will take you right back into the production block. And here's a really cool feature that I think a lot of users don't know about. If you click right here on that factory, it will pull out a blueprint for that building with this recipe selected. Now I don't currently, I just started a new game for this tutorial, but if this got built, it would have this recipe already selected in it. So it saves you the time of selecting the recipes. So I highly recommend using the pipette tool here. You can just build things with recipes already selected. It's very nice. And then you can select done to kind of check things off as you go. And then once you finish, you've built your block. So that's the pin feature. A simpler limitation is a little interesting. You would use that if you wanted to say, hey, I only have four gear makers. I don't have five. So you would click on that and then you would type four into the gear one and it would modify the other buildings accordingly in this top row. So you can see, oh, I won't be getting 10 small parts. I'll only be getting eight. And so I don't use this super often because usually I plan it out and then I build it to whatever it says I need. But if you know you're limited to a certain thing, you can plug that in pretty easily. And if you want to, like, let's say you wanted to say, wait, I'm actually limited to one bolt maker. You can chain, you could remove the limitation by hitting backspace and then enter. 
and it'll go back to not limiting the gear makers. But now I'm limiting the bolt makers to one, so you can see it modifies the other buildings in this top row accordingly. So that's a simpler limitation. Generally, I don't use that, but it is handy once in a while. And we'll talk about ingredient input. That one is super handy for certain mod packs. If you want to use all of a certain thing, I highly recommend changing this uh, to ingredient input from product input. So this looks confusing, so we're going to start a new line here. In Pyanodons, something you make in the early game is called coal gas. But you can make it from a lot of different places. You can make coal gas from raw coal. You can also make coal gas from coal. And you can also make coal gas from coke. And each of those recipes makes the next thing. So raw coal makes coal, coal makes coke. So if you know you need 100 coal gas per second, it can be very confusing. So let's actually try that real quick. Coal gas. It can be very confusing on which recipe do you even click. And if you click all of them and you say, I need 100 coal gas, it's going to default by making this top one give you the 100 coal gas. But then the other recipes also give you coal gas, so you end up with 4,000. That's way more than I wanted, right? So you might even know that you can change this percentage. So you're like, oh, well, I can change this to like only giving me 20% of the coal gas. But that's just going to be a nightmare to try to figure out all these percentages to work it out perfectly. So instead, you flip it around. So I'll delete it so you can see what it looks like from the start. We would add the recipe that I want to start with, which is the coal gas from raw coal. And then I switch this to product input. And then I say maybe just 10 raw coal. Doesn't really matter. Or one. Now I can click on this coal and see what it's used in. Well, it's also used in this coal gas recipe and it will automatically use all of my coal. And then I'll click on the Coke button and I want to do the coal gas recipe. And now it's automatically perfectly using all of my raw coal to make the products that it makes. And then you might be like, well, but you said you needed 100 coal gas and I can't just type 100 there. But what I do is I just use, you can do math inside of the quantity thing. As it says there, formula is allowed. So I know I need 100. Currently, it's giving me 7.38. So what you do is you divide by the number you see, divide by 7.38, and then multiply by 100. And then hit Enter, and with some rounding error, it gives me exactly 100 output. So now I didn't have to come up with the crazy percentages of how much coal gas comes from this one, how much coal gas comes from this one, and how much coal gas comes from this one. I could just figure out, oh, I need exactly 13.56 coal to give me 100 coal gas. So product input is very handy whenever you know the product that you have and you want to see what you can get out of it if you don't know exactly what your output needs to be. It's also handy when there are multiple things all adding up to give you a singular output. Product input's helpful there too. Finally, we have the options here, computing by factory or matrix solver. So let's go back to our small parts. Computing by factory is pretty simple. That's just say you want two factories running full time. You would just click two into the top. It'll auto set the other ones. And that means it will tell you exactly how many small parts you get if two factories are running 100% of the time making small parts. I generally don't do computing by factory, but you might if you know, oh, I need the output from exactly one factory. Then you would just type one into here and be done with it. You can also limit multiple things, and then it will say, hey, you actually need some extra gears because you're not making enough, which is a little different than the assembler limitation, which will redo the whole block to tell you if you're limited on both of these, here's what you would need. This one will just say, oh, well, you need to find 0.5 gears from somewhere else because you're not getting it from here because you said you can only have two factories of gears. And again, you can reset that by just backspacing and hitting enter. Now, Matrix Solver is pretty interesting. Uh, you'll use this in a lot of mod packs or even in the basic Covarex, so the Uranium, uh, Uranium 2, 3, I forget what it is or where it is, goodness. Maybe there are no, maybe they took 
that out of Pyanodons. Um, but I know something I use the matrix solver for pretty regularly is, um, no, I swear it's in here. I want to find it over X uranium processing. Here it is. Uranium enrichment, Cobrex enrichment process. So let's say I want one uranium 235 as an output. Well, it's automatically going to do the math for me. But what if I was also getting uranium from another source? Uh, for example, we have this processing going on. Well, it, it has a zero for some reason, because it doesn't, by default, know how to just give us the uranium-235 from this recipe. So if you change over to Matrix Solver, it figures out all of that for you to give you that one that you need. And sometimes it has a little bit of rounding error, but it figures all of it out and tells you that you need exactly 29.59 uranium ore to be processed into one uranium-235. And so the Matrix Solver is really handy when you have ingredients and products being the same thing. You know, you'll notice the products of this are the same as the products of this, which are the same as the ingredients of this. So when you have that sort of thing going on, the matrix solver is a lifesaver. Um, I highly recommend using it if things don't feel like they're working out properly. Try hitting matrix solver. Sometimes it blows the whole world up and you need to go back to computing by element, but I highly recommend trying it out. And you can see here that it's adjusted the percentage of the recipe so that it all works out nicely. So that is the basics of how to use Helmod for setting up production lines and production blocks. I will give you one more little tip before we leave, which is if your block is starting to get too unwieldy, for example, if I wanna make engines with a certain recipe and I start adding recipes and I start seeing that, oh my gosh, this rubber that I need to make belts is actually very complicated. And I wanna add, I wanna click on these things and add even more, but that's just for the belt. I'm also gonna need, the small parts and the duralumin and the pipe. So what you can do is you can click this little house button to make it into its own block. And if you control click, it will take everything beneath it with it. So if I click on that, it takes all of the stuff that was there, puts it into its own block, and then I can start making that block more complicated while still maybe having small parts as its own block. And that way you can separate all of the main ingredients for engines into their own blocks. So that's just a little organizational tip. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed. Thanks for watching. Let me know what you think in the comments and what else you'd like to see in future videos. Have a great day.